On July 28, 1914 the First World War would start with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. After the unassassination August 23, 1914, the Battle of Battle of Mons the battle would kill 3,638 men, the two belligerents of the battle were the untied kingdom and German empire. The dawn of 23rd of August, a German artillery bombardment began on the British lines, throughout the day the Germans concentrated on the British at the salient formed by the loop and the canal, at 9 a.m. the first German infantry assault began. With the Germans attempting to force their way across four bridges that crossed the canal at the salient. For German battalions attacked the Nimi Bridge, which was defended by a company of the 4th Battalion, Royal Fusiliers and a machine gun section led by Lt. Maurice Dies. Advancing at first in close column, parade ground formation, the Germans made easy targets for the riflemen, who hit German soldiers at over 1,000 yards, 910 meters, mowing them down by rifle, machine gun and artillery fire. So heavy was the British rifle fire throughout the battle that some Germans thought they were facing batteries of machine guns. By the afternoon, the British position in the salient had become untenable, the 4th Middlesex had suffered casualties of 15 officers and 353 other ranks killed or wounded. To the east of the British position, units of the German 9 Corps had begun to cross the canal in force, threatening the British right flank. At Nimi, Private Oscar Niemeyer had swum across the canal under British fire to operate machinery closing a swing bridge. Although he was killed, his actions reopened the bridge and allowed the Germans to increase pressure against the 4th Royal Fusiliers. Having returned from Valenciennes, Commander-in-Chief Sir John French was still convinced that an advance could soon be made, however, by 3 p.m., the 3rd Division was ordered to retire from the salient to positions a short distance to the south of Mons and a similar retreat towards evening by the 5th Division to conform. By nightfall, Two corps had established a new defensive line running through the villages of Montrol, Boussou, Wasms, Potteridge, and Frameries. The Germans had built pontoon bridges over the canal and were approaching the British positions in great strength. News had arrived that the French 5th Army was retreating, dangerously exposing the British right flank and at 2 a.m. on August 24, two corps was ordered to retreat southwest into France to reach defensible positions along the valenciennes maubeuge Road. Sir John finally accepted that an advance would not be able to take place and admitted that a retreat had to be made quickly, else the consequences would be irreparable for the BEF. At Wasms, elements of the 5th Division faced a big attack, German artillery began bombarding the village at daybreak, and at 10 a.m. infantry of the German III Corps attacked. Advancing in columns, the Germans were immediately met with massed rifle and machine gun fire and were mown down like grass. For a further two hours, soldiers of the Northumberland Fusiliers, 1st West Kent's, 2nd Battalion, King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry, 2nd Battalion, Duke of Wellington's Regiment and the 1st Battalion, Bedfordshire Regiment, held off German attacks on the village, despite many casualties and then retreated in good order to St. Vost. On the extreme left of the British line, the 14th and 15th Brigades of the 5th Division were threatened by a German outflanking move and were forced to call for help from the cavalry. 47, the 2nd Cavalry Brigade, along with the 119th Battery Royal Field Artillery, RFA, and L Battery RHA, were sent to their aid. Dismounting, the cavalry and the two artillery batteries screened the withdrawal of the 14th and 15th Brigades in four hours of intense fighting. On August 23, the 18th Division of 9 Corps advanced and began to bombard the British defences near Maziers and St. Denis. Part of the 35th Brigade, which contained large numbers of Danes from northern Schleswig, got across the canal east of Nimi with few casualties and reached the railway beyond in the early afternoon, but the attack on Nimi was repulsed. The 36th Brigade captured bridges at Aaborg against determined resistance, after which the defenders of Nimi gradually withdrew the bridges to the north were captured at 4 p.m. and the town stormed. Quast ordered the 18th Division to take Mons and push south to Quesums and Mesvin. Mons was captured unopposed, except for a skirmish on the southern fringe and by dark, the 35th Brigade was in the vicinity of Quesums and Hyen. On higher ground to the east of Mons, the defense continued. On the front of the 17th Division, British cavalry withdrew from the canal crossings at Vilserhain and Thieu and the division advanced to the St. Symphorian, St. Gislin Road. 
At 5 p.m., the divisional commander ordered an enveloping attack on the British east of Mons, who were pushed back after a stand on the Mons Givry Road. By 11 a.m., reports from the 4, 3, and 9 Corps revealed that the British were in St. Gislin and at the canal crossings to the west, as far as the bridge at Pomeriol, with no troops east of Conde. Intelligence reports from August 22 had noted 30,000 troops heading through Dart towards Mons, and on 23 August, 40,000 men had been seen on the road to Genli south of Mons, with more troops arriving at Jamaps. To the north of Binche, the right flank division of the Second Army had been forced back to the southwest by British cavalry. In the early afternoon, the two cavalry corps reported that it had occupied the area of Field Courtric Tournay during the night and forced back a French brigade to the southeast of Roubaix. With this report indicating that the right flank was clear of Allied troops, Cluck ordered the three corps to advance through St. Gislin and Jamaps on the right of Nine Corps and for Four Corps to continue towards Hensis and Thules. For Corps was already attacking at the Canal du Centre, the two corps and the four reserve corps were following on behind the main part of the army. Three corps had to advance across meadows to an obstacle with few crossings, all of which had been destroyed. The 5th Division advanced towards Tertree on the right, which was captured, but then the advance on the railway bridge was stopped by small arms fire from across the canal. On the left flank, the division advanced towards a bridge northeast of Wasmuel and eventually managed to get across the canal against determined resistance, before turning towards St. Gislin and Hornu. As dark fell, Wasmuel was occupied and attacks on St. Gislin were repulsed by machine gun fire, which prevented troops crossing the canal except at Tertree, where the advance was stopped for the night. The 6th Division was counterattacked at Glynn, before advancing towards higher ground south of Jamaps. The British in the village stopped the division with small arms fire, except for small parties, who found cover west of a path from Glynn to Jamaps. These isolated parties managed to surprise the defenders at the crossing north of the village, with the support of a few field guns around 5 p.m., after which the village was captured. The rest of the division crossed the canal and began a pursuit towards Frameries and Sipley but stopped as dark fell, the four corps arrived in the afternoon, as the 8th Division closed on Hensies and Thulin and the 7th Division advanced towards Villepomeriel, where there were two canals blocking the route. The 8th Division encountered the British at the northernmost canal, west of Pomeriel and forced back the defenders but then bogged down in front of the second canal, under machine gun fire from the south bank. The attack was suspended after night fell and the British blew the bridge. The 7th Division forced the British back from a railway embankment and over the canal, to the east of Pomeriel but was pushed back from the crossing. Small parties managed to cross by a footbridge built in the dark and protected repair parties at the Blown Bridge, which allowed troops to get across and dig in 400 metres, 440 yards, south of the canal, on either side of the road to Thulin. Late in the day, the two corps and the four reserve corps rested on their march routes at La Hamade and Birgs, after marching 32 and 20 kilometres, 20 and 12 miles, respectively, 30 and 45 kilometres, 19 and 28 miles, behind the front, too far behind to take part in. The Battle on August 24 In the mid-afternoon of August 23rd, for Corps was ordered to rest, as reports from the front suggested that the British defence had been overcome and the 1st Army headquarters wanted to avoid the army converging on Mulbage, leaving the right, western, flank vulnerable. In the evening, Cluck cancelled the instruction, after reports from 9 Corps reporting that its observation aircraft had flown over a column 3 kilometres, 1.9 miles, long, moving towards Mons along the Malplaquet Road. Two more columns were seen on the Malplaquet, Genli and the Quebi, Genli Roads, a large force was seen near Esquilles and cavalry was found further east, which showed that most of the BEF was opposite the 1st Army. It was considered vital that the 2nd Canal crossings were captured along the line, as had been achieved by the 9 and part of 3 Corps. For Corps was ordered to resume its march and move the left wing towards Thulin, but it was already engaged at the canal crossings. The 3 and 9 Corps attack during the day had succeeded against a tough, nearly invisible enemy, but the offensive had to continue, because it appeared that only the right flank of the army could get behind the BEF. The situation remained unclear at the 1st Army headquarters in the evening, because communication with the other right flank armies had been lost and only fighting near Thulin by 7 Corps. The right flank unit of the 2nd Army had been reported. Cluck ordered that the attack was to continue on August 24, past the west of Mulbage, and that two corps would catch up behind the right flank of the army. 
Nine Corps was to advance to the east of Bavi, Three Corps was to advance to the west of the village, Four Corps was to advance towards Warnies Le Grand 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles, further to the west and the two cavalry corps was to head towards Denine to cut off the British retreat. During the night there were several British counterattacks but none of the German divisions was forced back over the canal. At dawn the Nine Corps resumed its advance and pushed forwards against rearguards until the afternoon, when the Corps stopped the advance due to uncertainty about the situation on its left flank and the proximity of Maubeuge. At 4 p.m. cavalry reports led Quas to resume the advance, which was slowed by the obstacles of Maubeuge and Three Corps congesting the roads. On the Three Corps front to the west, the 6th Division attacked Frameries at dawn, which held out until 10.30 a.m. and then took La Bouverie and Potteridge, after which the British began to retreat. The division turned west towards Warkwignes and the 5th Division. St. Gislin had been attacked by the 5th Division behind an artillery barrage, where the 10th Brigade had crossed the canal and taken the village in house to house fighting, then reached the south end of Hornu. A defensive line had been established by the British along the Dar Wasms Railway, which stopped the German advance and diverted the 9th Brigade until 5 p.m., when the British withdrew. The German infantry were exhausted and stopped the pursuit at Dar and Warkwignes. During the day Klux sent liaison officers to the Corps headquarters, stressing that the army should not converge on Maubeuge but pass to the west, ready to envelop the British left, west, flank. The four Corps headquarters had ordered its divisions to attack over the canal at dawn but found that the British had blown the bridges and withdrawn. Repairs took until 9 a.m. and the 8th Division did not reach Quivrain until noon. The 7th Division reached the railway at Thuin during the morning and then took Illusions late in the afternoon. As the 8th Division moved on, the vanguard was ambushed by British cavalry before an advance to Valenciennes could begin and then attacked a British rearguard at Bizier, which then slipped away to Audregnes. The rest of the division skirmished with French territorials southwest of Bizier. The four corps attack forced back rear guards but inflicted no serious damage, having been slowed by the bridge demolitions at the canals. The cavalry divisions had advanced towards Denine and the Jagger battalions had defeated troops of the French 88th Territorial Division at Tournai and then reached Marchiennes, after a skirmish with the 83rd Territorial Division near Orkies. German air reconnaissance detected British troops on August 21, advancing from Le Coteau to Maubeuge, and on August 22 from Maubeuge to Mons, as other sources identified halting places, but poor communication and lack of systematic direction of air operations led to the assembly of the BEF from Condé to Binche being unknown to the Germans on 22-23 August. British reconnaissance flights had begun on August 19 with two sorties and two more on August 20, which reported no sign of German troops. Fog delayed flights on August 21, but in the afternoon German troops were seen near Korkreich and three villages were reported to be burning. Twelve reconnaissance sorties were flown on August 22 and reported many German troops closing in on the BEF, especially troops on the Brussels, Ninove Road, which indicated an enveloping maneuver. One British aircraft was shot down and a British observer became the first British soldier to be wounded while flying. By the evening Sir John French was able to discuss with his commanders the German dispositions near the BEF which had been provided by aircraft observation, the strength of the German forces, that the Sambra had been crossed and that an encircling move by the Germans from Gerardsbergen was possible. During the battle on August 23, the aircrews flew behind the battlefield looking for troop movements and German artillery batteries, 